feels I like mean, multiple years. I mean, yeah. I mean, I so I. Uh oh. Did John cut out? <laughs> no. Uh oh. No. John, are you there? John, it's okay. Come back. <laughs> Please, John. Hi, this is Art Art Art. I'm Fawocious. I'm Jonathan. And we're with John Berkerman. Hello. 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 How are you both? So excited. Pretty excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited too. Yeah, this is a big one for us. We've been doing a lot of research and watching every single bit of content about you on the internet. Oh, don't believe yeah, don't really believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> we'll find out today if it's all true. <laughs> we'll see. I'll I'll tell you the truth. Um, yeah. That. So you're a lot of things like artist, designer, toy maker. You have books. books, yeah. <laughs> books, yeah, I do. All those things. How, how would you, what would you describe yourself, just generally, I guess? I'm generally human. Um, I'd say ninety five percent human, five percent bagel, and um, <laughs> I don't know. I like making stuff. Uh, I I tell people I'm an artist. If I was to, if we were to meet in a a, a cocktail bar. And we were chatting and you said, what do you do? I'd probably say I'm an artist and, but I do lots of different things because if you're an author, you're still an artist. And if you're a designer, you're an artist. If you're an animator, you're an artist. And if you're a painter, a sculptor. So, but you say that word and, and, and people imagine you with a palette and a canvas and a, you know, you're doing that, you know, in painting and stuff. I think that's what a lot of people imagine when you say artist, but actually, um, everything around us has, has been sort of touched by an artist of, of sorts or, you know, thought about or created by an artist. So it's pretty, it's a pretty all encompassing term. That's why I, I start wide and I bring it in very narrow. And I say, I make stuff with googly eyes on it. <laughs> right. So a very, a serious artist. <laughs> yeah. I'm very serious about making, uh, having a fun time being an artist, I think. Yeah, like my um, work might not always look super serious and stuff, but it's serious to me. It's kind of actually quite difficult to make fun, funny stuff seriously or be taken seriously. It's kind of a bit of a adjacent turn to the conversation, but yeah, that kind of thing. Um, that has its, uh, has like tricky parts to it as well. Right. You know, how do you how do you be taken seriously if you're always trying to be goofy or funny and stuff? Um, so yeah, that's that's a bit tricky. But I do take it incredibly seriously. I mean, it's what I've been doing uh, for most you know for most of my life. So and it's all I really want to do. It's what I'm really passionate about. It's all I can do. So it's it's yeah, extremely serious. Right. I love that. Yeah. Silly, With my know, work. Yeah. Um... Like I touch on a lot of funny things as well. I remember talking to uh, one of my teachers and they said like, oh, if you do that, you're gonna be the meme artist. But like, that's how I wanna express myself. So it's like, why change it? So um, yeah. do you get that I a mean, lot? People don't take you seriously? Yeah, uh, that does happen. Who wouldn't wanna be a meme artist? That's amazing. Isn't that what yeah. all art is trying to be? What is a meme? Something that's like easily shared and passed amongst people. People relate to it. And they, and they are, you know, that's incredible. That's what we're all sort of reaching out to do, right? Connect and communicate and um, respond. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a university. I studied fine art. And uh, I think some people thought I'd be better off in a, like studying a different kind of discipline, whether it be design or illustration or something. But my mind doesn't really work in that way, even though I completely understand my work looks like it could be belong in those fields. And, and it sometimes does. Um, but what can you do other than try and, you know, make sense of yourself to yourself and just, you know, that's, the way I am that's the way that I work and and it's the way that I think and it's difficult 
for me to sort of bend that into a, a different sort of format. Um, yeah, I've, I've had that a lot. I've, I've had that in an art way. I've also had it in a commercial way, a design way. I once had an agent that told me I had a very quick style and that it would be difficult to um, demand a high fee for my work because it looks like it's been made very quickly and haphazardly. So, uh, you know, in a, even in a sort of commercial sense, people have sort of pushed me. But that's, I mean, people thought rock and roll was a bad idea or trashy or something. So no one knows anything really. Right. Do you ever feel weird making like really positive, bright art when there's like a lot of like negativity going around? Well, that's a good question. I feel weird most of the time, regardless of what's going on, but um, right. <laughs> I don't think about it in that way. And I don't think my, I don't think of my work in that way. Um, something that I've got a lot from like chatting to people online and, and people leaving comments, which has been really wonderful. People saying, oh, your work is really colorful and upbeat and it brings a smile to my face. And that, that's really great. I, I love hearing that. But that doesn't, it's not really in my head when I'm, when I'm creating my work. I'm not thinking in that way. What can I make which will be happy? I, I, it really doesn't, um, it's, it's not like anything, it's not an agenda of mine. Um, I'm just trying to make stuff that, that makes sense to me and I feel like I want to make. So if it has that sort of side effect, then it's great. But I don't always feel like that when I'm making things. And I'm, you know, probably like you guys, stressed and um, concerned about the state of many things in the world. And maybe this is my process in dealing with that. And it comes out bright and colorful and bold. But I think if you look at a lot of my work, um, a lot of my characters and, and stuff within the painting, there's actually quite a, a tension in there. And there's there's a, you know, I have quite a lot of anxiety and I think that that manifests in, in some of the characters and some of their expressions so that suits me if on first bite it looks like colorful and fun but then if you delve in you might get a little peek into my psyche then that's okay as well I mean I want I want people to enjoy it and to find pleasure in in engaging with my work so if they find it fun and funny then brilliant yeah right has your work always been like this kind of bright doodly style? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Like, um, it's just evolved over the years, but, and I think it's got simpler. I think, um, I think the more you work on, on something, you start to realize what works for you and what doesn't and you, and you start like shedding another layer of skin and like that doesn't work and i'm just going to constantly and it, you hone down on something until you get just two eyes and that's all you need um but yeah it's, i think it's always a playful thing because that's like my personality uh, and um to go back to your previous question about like uh, the troubles of the world i think i'm one of those people that would try and make a joke in a serious situation to alleviate the sort of, uh, can, you know, the stress of it. So I think that's that's probably what is coming out in my work. Like I'm goofing around because things are so uh, grim when you start looking about what's happening in the world. So uh, yeah, that, that kind of thing. But I think it's always, I've always had a bit of a playful thing. I've always been into comics and animation and any that sort of character stuff. I've always loved all that kind of thing. So. My work has always sort of been a mirror of those uh, influences. Right. I used to zoom out a bit. Um, have you always been into art? Like, when did you know you wanted to pursue art as a career? Mm, I think, uh, well, yeah, I always liked art. It was always like this, the one lesson at school I would look forward to. But it was the one lesson that we had the least of. Mm. So it was really frustrating. Um, and but it's the one I liked. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess I was one of those kids where other kids were like, "He'll be an artist one day." I'm like, "What are you gonna be? You're gonna be an artist, or you, you know, something like that." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I don't." I I had this ambition that I would live in my parents' um, garage or garage, <laughs> and uh, with like a dog, and I would paint or and I would make drawings and paint stuff. And I didn't know if you could. I had no idea of selling work 
or making money or licensing or doing products or anything like that. I just thought like that, yeah, I'll be an artist. I can like sit in paint and have a cup of tea and like eat a biscuit and then do another little painting. And, and in many ways, that's how I've set up my life now, you know. Uh, so I kind of fulfilled that strange little ambition. It was, it was that or a football player or a ghostbuster. That was the free free things I wanted to be. So, so there you go. Yeah, me and Forsters were actually talking about that. Like being right ghostbusters? Before this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. How like we really appreciate with your work, it's like, oh, I wanted to do stuff with spray paint. I wanted to do a toy line. I'm gonna make a book. Like I think mm. Fawoshis, like I don't know. When I think about people like that, I think about Fawcett and you. Like, I think that's the way to be as an artist. It seems. I mean, fun. yeah. I mean, I I see you guys uh, can jump to different disciplines and different like show your work in different ways. I think it's like um, like why why at the be like what we said at the beginning. Like, um, I want to make stuff, and it doesn't have to be one particular type of thing it's like you are the interesting element in your work like both of you and any artist watching this like like that's that's the unique thing is what you are and who you are and what you think and how you articulate that and it could be in a book it could be a song it could be a sculpture it could be an animation it could be a crypto art thing you know it could be anything right it's it's you with a constant and yeah, I've never wanted to be bound to like one particular medium or way of working. And it's fine if you do want to do that. If you're like marble, that's what I go crazy for. I'm just going to make sculptures out of marble. Brilliant. I can't work like that. My brain doesn't like function like that. So I have an idea, like the idea is the valuable thing. It's like how best to execute it. Where, where can it, it could be a sweatshirt. It could be a hat. It could just be walking in a funny way for a day. Who knows? Right. It's just, and I and I think my passions extend beyond just. I mean, I'm sure you guys too. Like I like movies, I like books. I like so. Uh, why wouldn't I want to dabble in all those things? You know, it's so fun. It's so nice to see someone. When I look at your work, you're just you. And I was on the call with Jonathan yesterday, and I was like, wow, like he's just living himself, like just doing what he wants. He has all these books, and I feel. I'm younger and I think an idea and I feel like I get insecure, like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Or I think of all these limits and stuff, but to see someone just doing what they want to do and it's so authentically them, it's like, oh, wow, like I can do that too. Like people can just be themselves. It's it's awesome. What you're doing is really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think you're doing it. I, I, you know, I think, I think, I think you're doing it really well. And I don't think I mean, I have all those anxieties and things. It's not like I'm doing all this and I, and I'm just like chippering along like an old like 1920s cartoon character. <laughs> like I have all these concerns and things. I don't. I think that's just inbuilt and um, never really goes away. But you can sort of mitigate them by just realizing that hey, it's okay to fail, and it's okay to try stuff and like. No, there's no such thing as complete success, complete failure anyway. It's all about how we like frame those experiences. And like one thing leads to another. And, uh, you know, that's the one, one of the few good things about being a bit older is you can look back down all the things you made and you say, well, that actually kind of laid the foundation for this thing that I ended up making a year later, which led to this thing that two years later I started working. Uh, you know, and I can kind of see. So like the books came from... I feel I was in a band 10 years ago. So I was making music and writing songs in a very silly, playful way. And that was just a hobby, right? And I did it for a bunch of time and I had a great time and it kind of ended. And then I did feel a little bit sometimes like, wow, that was a bit of a waste of time. I put a lot of effort into it. I mean, financially, total write-off, but I had fun. But then when I started making the picture books, I was like, wait, this is just like writing a song. Oh, and I put in a lot of hours already doing something else and it kind of fed into, into this. And I feel the same with like painting in my studio, playing around with paints and colors and spray paints. Now when I sit at the computer and you have all these tools on your iPad, I'm like, oh, 
I've got a little bit of an idea of how I want to mess around with those because I did them in the studio. And then when I've done it on the iPad for a long time, I'm back in the studio. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is now I want to play around. Like, uh, how can I do this, uh, you know, in an analog way? And then you start mixing and all these things come in together. So it's all it's there's no wasted time, really, as long as you, you know, sort of it's feeding your curiosity and stuff. And it's all it's all good. Do you think trying but, all those different yeah. types of mediums and approaches, does that keep it fresh and like make you creative? I think for me, it does. Um, for me, I get, I really love not knowing what I'm going to make. So if you give me a material or a medium, you know, to, to play around with, and I don't like, my head doesn't already know, I don't have the muscle memory that I know how to manipulate this into my kind of thing that's really great because then you start learning and it's, it tricks you and you do things and it doesn't work where you expect it. And I think that's great. And it's good for keeping you on your toes. Again, the flip side of that is being a real master in one or two things is also great. Like a craftsman that knows their tool inside out. But for me, um, I think I like improvising. I like play. I think that's when I'm like, I feel best about making and so sometimes I need to do that by throwing a little curveball in my path, like buying, going to the art shop and buying something I've never used before. Don't even know what it does, like that kind of thing. Um, I think there's a real value to be like an amateur, a beginner. You get to make all these wonderful little mistakes that you wouldn't allow yourself to later, later down the line. But it's within those mistakes, magic happens, that, that we find stuff that you couldn't, you didn't plan to do and therefore you know it's it's a delight and if i'm surprising and delighting myself and hopefully it, it comes through in the work so so yeah for me it's definitely um like an uh you can use an exercise analogy it's not good to just to do one type of exercise right because one muscle kind of reaches a limit and then the rest of you is kind of, so it's good to mix it up so i find that like creative exercise you know is that ever terrifying though? Like starting a work kind of like as an amateur, not knowing where you're going to go with it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, it's not terrifying. Terrifying, terrifying is a strong word. <laughs> yeah, terrifying is other things that are going on in the world. Yeah. I, I think that's the thing. We, we, all, we all get a little anxious of like um, a blank page. I was going to look, I was looking for a thing to show you, show you what a blank page looks like. Whoa. <laughs> I'm terrified. That, that, is, that is scary. But like, it's only a, you know, uh, you could just tear it up, throw it away, or turn the page. And so I think it's okay. I think it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, um, it's, yeah, it's an anxiety that's, it's not the worst in the world. And I think it's easy to sort of get over. Um, but yeah, definitely. Definitely like, um, I get, anxious about doing stuff when it's for something and then mm. I'm not sure about it it's easy to do it in the privacy of your own like studio or bedroom or wherever you are right in your little notebook no one has to see and that's great but if it's like John we want you know we want you to do this and we're going to put it on display here and uh, yeah that that's a different kind of sort of yeah um have you gotten but, confident yeah. with those things over time or is it the same? I'm so <laughs> nervous every time something like that happens. Get better. <laughs> it depends what it is. It depends what it is. And sometimes you get confident at it because you've been doing it a bunch and then you don't do it anymore. Like some, you know, like I painted a lot of murals and stuff. Uh, but like this year I've done like one. And then I, uh, I did one outdoors um, uh, like a few months ago and it was a bit like what do I do again how does this work I kind of forgot uh, and I'm my, my brain's kind of all over the place so it's kind of if, if I'm not doing it then I forget about something quite quickly and yeah I was a bit anxious I mean I could yeah I basically couldn't sleep the night before and it's so silly because it's something I've done a million times and it's okay like even if it's not good I mean this is what I tell people all the time if you don't like it just we can paint it out <laughs> we can do it again it's not it's not the end of the world, but I still got a little thing, but that's, yeah, that's just like dealing with our own, our own sort of uh, hangups, unfortunately. But though, you know, also those things keep you on your toes. Yeah. I, I yeah. feel if, if we're too confident and we know exactly what we're doing, 
then I feel there's a, a tendency to sort of lapse into sort of laziness um, and, you know, just do the same thing again and again. And then it looks the same and everyone's like, oh, well done, you did the thing that you do. And, but then it's not really going anywhere. And pros and cons, that could be good for your business mind. You know, do the thing. Yay, you did the thing. That's what we love you for. But creatively, that might be a little you might secretly go home and go, I, I can do more than the thing, but it's all they will. So I don't know. We will have to find our own balances to these things. But definitely to keep to keep me sane and happy, I have to keep mix, mixing things up. And that's what I'm in it for, you know, life. I'm in it to like make fun stuff. Yeah. Right. Ultimately. Like a long time to make a lot of fun stuff. So probably try well, to hope, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean that's that's yeah, that's what I want to do, I think, more than anything. So Right. Yeah, I think just having like a narrow or I think narrow is a bad word for it, but like a general idea, like I want to make fun stuff. Mm. And then you just fulfill that however that is that day. Yeah. I think that's a great way to approach that. Yeah. Or like, you know, I wonder what would happen if I did this with this material or or I want to express myself in a certain way. How can I do it in this medium? I don't know. Like that, sometimes like you have a little song inside that you want to get out and it might be a painting or whatever. And it's like, OK, I need to I need to express it. So, yeah. Has, has there been something like that? Like, oh, I want to express this as a painting and express this as this. But has it been something that you want to do that you haven't got the opportunity to yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, always go bigger. You can always take what yeah. you've done and uh, hold down shift and pull it out like this and make <laughs> it as big as possible. Uh, so, you know, I've done some like inflatable sculptures and things. I'd like to do more. I'd like to do bigger ones. I'd like to make bigger paintings. Um, one thing that I've been trying to do for a long time um, I haven't yet done it to like make an animated show like to take my characters and have them like in a in a in a series hello how are you and and kind of thing and the, that's like one thing that I've been working on quite a lot and it's difficult to get it done but um, I would do that if I could or I'm trying to that's like a little, it's become a little bit of my white whale. Uh, I've been involved in things where people have invited me to do the artwork for a show. And it nearly got made and then it didn't get made. Uh -huh. And then I've also tried with my own ideas and submitted them to the people I've met over the years. And hey, do you think this would be a good show? And stuff like that and i have something in development at the moment so that's good but i've been in this situation before so i know it's it's difficult to get that green light but um you gotta keep trying but like that yeah that's become like an, uh, an exciting thing to sort of pursue maybe it will happen maybe it won't i don't know but yeah I hope and it, it brings together oh thank you yeah i mean it brings together a lot of my favorite things right it because it's art and it's um writing it's storytelling you can have music in it it's animation you can have different people doing different bits so uh, i feel like it would be a, a really cool thing to do if not that then maybe like a theatrical show that would be pretty sick yeah i don't know what about you what about you guys what what are you what are you excited what would you like to do if you could do anything tomorrow with your work i don't know i feel like i want to do the the classic boring things first well boring but like i want to have like a solo show or at least mm -hmm. be in more shows mm -hmm. i definitely want to work bigger i think like large-scale paintings regardless like yeah, yeah. of what it is just because it's on that scale it's so much more interesting um and then lately i want to get more into vr and 3d work that's mm. like, completely new to me yeah what about you, Fosh? You're a big dreamer. You oh. want to make a pen. Talk about oh, that. yeah. <laughs> what do you want to make? I want to make my own line of markers and pens. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm, yeah, with you all the way. That would be sick. 
Yeah, that's my dream. I just like, I they- always want to do everything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like I look at furniture and I'm like, I want to make furniture. (laughs) And I think of like different things I want to do or how I would make it look. Um, I want to do everything like VR, everything I have, like I have my computer. I'm like, I want to make my own kind of computer. (laughs) Like I just, I I like doing everything and I never get any work because I try to do everything. Right. Well, (laughs) you know. There's plenty of time, but that's pretty exciting. Wow, I think you've, I've never heard anyone say they want to make their own computer. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, some people, some artists make their own software and, yeah. and that's pretty cool. I've, uh, you know, downloaded some bits and bobs from different people who've made their own little animation tools and little indie kind of apps and stuff. I think that's like, yeah, I've tried, I've tried that in the past, like working with someone some, to make little gizmos that you can put on your phone and photograph things and it, put eyeballs on them and stuff it, yeah but but never a whole computer that would be that would be amazing yeah or like a video game that would be so cool yes yeah. yeah i'm with you on that as well i made um i made a level for wipeout once like i got commissioned by sony and i don't know do you, do you know that game it's like yeah. a futuristic racing game and um they commissioned a couple of artists to make levels for like special downloadable content levels you know so that was amazing so i went to like the sony studios (laughs) in liverpool in england and i would like i want a monster here and like they go through a tunnel and there'll be hot dogs jumping and they put it all together it's it's super cool i was like i'm gonna make video game that was probably like 15 years ago now so (laughs) but yeah i would love to make a video game i just don't want to actually make the whole game i want someone to make the game and get oh. me to do all the other work i think yes <laughs> yeah or like get involved a little bit but not too much because there's only so much room you know my i'm low on ram so i have to be careful <laughs> what i dictate my, you know my attention to but yeah i'd love to do stuff like that yeah anything that like breathes life into your work right you know it's wonderful having paintings and things and it sort of comes alive in the mind of the viewer but also like a chair or you know uh um seeing work dance around the screen or people can play with it or walk through it in a vr kind of jungle or something that's that's super amazing like to put people in your world ultimately is what what any of these things are uh, sort of dabbling in i would say have you ever dabbled in vr yourself um not for a while i had to go on um is it tilt brush mm. I had to go on tilt brush a few years ago and it I, I I took off the headset and I I was a bit like um like you know in a film when someone like takes drugs and they're like <laughs> and you're like uh oh this you know yeah. <laughs> I was like geez I would like to stay in this world I felt a real sort of sadness in coming back to the our planet after being in like this infinite void where you can just draw in the sky and and lines appear and oh, it was amazing I would like, uh, yeah, and you guys are getting into it, right? I mean, how, that was, so like a few years ago, it seemed like you needed a fancy PC and a big room and you need like a thing in the corner of the room here. And is it still like that or is the tech sort of No, I just got a Jonathan a VR headset and literally it's wireless. You don't need nothing. Yeah. All you do is put it on and it's all in there. What? That's it. Seriously? Yeah, yeah you don't need a computer. You don't. You just there's an app on your phone, and you connect it, and you're done. And you could play like all the cool like games and everything. Seriously? Yeah. Can you can you do like can you can you do the tilt brush? Yeah, you could do tilt yep. brush, quill. You could even like sculpt and just wireless. Yeah. That's it. Really? Wow. And I'm the graphics just... are so much better as well. Like, and you're you're not even connected to anything, so. I just walk around in my living room like what would this machine be called per chance? I think it's the Oculus Oculus Quest 2. Yeah. I think it just Oculus. came out as well. <laughs> <laughs> it, you you gotta try it. it. Down. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, w- I would love to. Is it super expensive? I don't think it's too bad. Not it's compared to reasonable the other ones. For, for it being a portal into a new dimension. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's valuable. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I would really, really love to. Because yeah, when I when I started playing with that tilt brush thing, I start uh, whenever I went to someone's office or something, and I saw they had it, I was like, "Can I come back and play on your thing?" Um, 
you know, like when your mate gets a Super Nintendo or something, suddenly you're around their house every day. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they were like, uh, you can't keep coming in here, Jim. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I would love to do that. Because I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm a very 2D kind of person predominantly see the world in a flat 2d way so um but that is really intuitive in, in like building structure and and depthy stuff so yeah yeah oh wow all right i yeah, was well, drawing well, on quill yeah. and i was just doing line work and you draw like normal but then you can go around it and go under it or like yep. hold your 2d drawing and like move it around it, it's so strange i also felt that when I took off my headset, I didn't feel sad. I was like, this is dangerous. <laughs> I yeah, like yeah. this so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one I had to go on, you drew something and then you could put the little cursor sort of on the top of your drawing and press something and then you would be stood on top. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, it would like oh. zoom you on top of like what, what you just drawn. So that was pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that technology is amazing. I mean, who, I mean, it's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to play be with a that. Great way to mix like the audio, visual, create the whole experience, right? Like, there's many opportunities online too. Like, Foshis, you mentioned someone who does VR concerts. Yeah, oh, this People is so show up in VR. Yeah, they get a little land in this VR world, like Somnium Space. They bought this land, right. they built their little building, and a singer every Tuesday goes and performs there and gets their tips, and people go watch in VR. And because it's VR, they have like the the spatial sound. So like when they walk around, it sounds like they're in a concert and they're with their friends. And the singer like makes a living going in VR and Whoa. doing concerts. <laughs> and it's so nuts. <laughs> and can you view it on the headset that you got? Yes. Uh, yeah, I do like sometimes I've draw thing to watch and join and yeah. paint together. Uh, wow, you can paint you can paint together in like real time. Maybe I've never done probably. it. Probably sure can. There's probably ways. but you can hang out in real. You can hang out together, right? Oh yeah, you there's could, so yeah. many apps so, like so VR you must be chat. able to do that. You just yeah. like sit and look at each other, play games, or just like I'm so old old wave. school. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sometimes think like I'm, I'm sat in my studio now, and I, I'm like, I don't need a physical space that I run out of and gets cluttered. I could just live right. in an infinite virtual space. No, that's Maybe what I was thinking what I about. Do. I have three computer monitors. I love my monitors, and I want more. But I'm like, I don't want to buy another one. But in <laughs> VR, I had like. 20 monitors and they were like on the ceiling on the right. floor i was walking on my computer just like looking it was so fun do you find you have to balance the mixture of digital and physical so i feel like if i do one for too long i start to feel like i'm ditching the other one right um i don't i never feel the pressure either way i mean maybe it's different for you, for you guys because um of, of like w the work that you've been recently making and getting out there and 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 everything and it's obviously digitally leaning but um like you say one 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 can refresh the other i feel and that yeah if i've if i ha I've, if i've had a session or a project that meant i'm working digitally for a long time then i'm super excited to like draw with a pen on a piece of paper and like you know touch it and I'll smudge some paints with my hand and stuff so um yeah I, don't, I never feel a pressure either, either way like they're all tools I try not to differentiate right. you know they're just uh which is the best tool for the job I would say let's not create a divide between these things and there's definite overlaps like I'm working digitally but I'm taking little videos and putting those in my digital work and I'm, I'm drawing stuff and like not even scanning it in, just photographing it and then dropping it in there. And it, so it's back and forth, you know, so the digital work is, has, has bits of stuff I've done by hand and, and whatnot. So I, I, I think uh, they totally coexist. It's just a different kind of brush, isn't it? You know? Yeah. I think that's a great way to put it. And 
I just got into digital like, I don't know, like six months ago, but it's been such a, I didn't think it would inspire my painting so much. Like I literally will draw a little bit, scan it, draw on it on top in Procreate, mm -hmm. and then go back to it in real life. And like, I see it in a whole new world and that's so valuable. Yeah. I, when I first was introduced to Photoshop, Hello, Photoshop. How are you? Oh, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> the uh, like that's the, like the first thing I wanted to do was scan stuff in, like put like oh here's a here's an old bag. Let's you know put a bit of that texture in and mix things up. And it felt like an amazing tool for like collage. And I was into like Kurt Schwitters and and that kind of stuff at the time. So I was like, oh, what can we find? What can we visually sample and mix in in with that and stuff? So. Now the tools are so that you can recreate a lot of that and a lot of stuff digitally straight off the bat. So you don't need to make a paint splatter and scan it in. You can just sort of do it on the thing. But um, it, yeah, I think like, you know, you just just don't have these hierarchies, just use it to, to what you want, will. I mean, there, there is a thing that in my studio here, I've got a bunch of materials that the person in the studio next door probably doesn't have and if they do they're in different states of disrepair or whatever and colors and whatnot but if we all have procreate then we probably all have exactly the same like startup settings anyway so i i'd like encourage people to like mess with those as much as possible mm -hmm. because there is a slight like homogenization of things there is a a flatness or a way of making things that can like permeate across a lot of work that's not to say everyone using you know indian inks wouldn't all have the same kind of something to it but um i think that's the only danger i think is that the tool the digital tools create like a bit of a shortcut and we all love shortcuts and it's how human brains are designed right and then sometimes we can even not even um acknowledge that we're doing these shortcuts and i don't know from a just variety is good kind of thing that's not not great like we don't want every song to sound the same to have the same auto tune filter to it and stuff maybe we do i don't know but like as a, as a creative i'm like i want to i want to find my thing and i don't want other people to like do it that way and if they do then i'm going to move because then it feels left me. I'm right. searching for that little thing, but that's my little mission. But yeah, I just thought of something. Um, even at our size, me and Fosh's like relatively small artists. I still like will occasionally see people. No, <laughs> no, you're not relatively small. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, but I still see people like. I don't know if I'm just it's my ego or what, but I see people do things that I think are reminiscent of things I've done before or mm -hmm. whatever reason. I never like call them out or anything, but like I would consider you a big artist and I'm sure tons of people like are really inspired by you. Like, is that weird to see people like copy your work kind of? Uh, yes, it is weird. It is weird because uh, you know, I don't think of myself as a big artist or big anything really uh, other than like a nerd, big nerd, <laughs> big old goofball. But um, it is weird. Cause like, I'm, I'm still me inside this little flesh spaceship. And, but people like we project, don't we, you know, like Tom Cruise is just a person, but we all think, Ooh, it's big. <laughs> He's a big entity. Right. Uh, or whatever else so like it's weird that even on like my tiny level people think of me as a thing and then I'm going to do work in the John Bergman way or something you know that is very strange for me to comprehend and um, it's incredibly humbling and, and flattering and I get a lot of amazing things like schools that have done projects based on my work and see all the kids drawings and things and you're like oh yeah they've they've drawn my character in there you know and they've done that and, it, and that's amazing um it's a little bit weird when you see it like professionally or commercially but then you can't have it both ways you can't say this is this i'm all about creativity and i'm sharing all my work and you can't have then you can't stop people 
being inspired by that, if you're lucky enough, it resonates with them and then it filters into the work. So I've, you sort of have to kind of make peace with that in a way. I mean, sometimes it's more obnoxious than others. I would say most of the time it's completely flattering and innocent and it's actually an amazing thing. Like that's a sort of thing I've gifted in a way. I've inspired people to work in a certain way and they're having fun doing it. That you can't not be happy with that as, as a human to human uh, interaction. Sometimes it's a little hard to stomach when you're like, oh, that person's just fake. Uh, I can tell even the piece they've they've kind of borrowed from, shall we say, in a point. But what, I don't know what you can do about it. I, yeah, uh, and I don't know, I don't really know how, the only way I can really deal with it is by paying no attention to it. Because it's yeah. weird, because you start thinking outside of yourself and seeing yourself in a, in a in this other way. And it's, I find it as a bit of a, it messes with my head. So I don't know. It's, yes, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. But like m most of it's really nice, I think, to see. But yeah, that's why you got, a, I think that is a reason why I keep sort of moving and bouncing from d different disciplines and different materials because um, it's like, okay, I've done this. I worked out how I would work in this way. There it is. And like, I can see like hundreds of people doing it in a similar way. And I'm like, well, I don't need to work anymore in this way. There's a whole team of people doing it now. They're good. And maybe they're going to get much better than me. They're going to take it in other directions or whatever. All right, they're on it. Now I'm going to play with this and see what will happen if I do work in this way. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, there isn't, we're not, we're not around, you know, for, for that long. So. So I kind of feel like that in a way. I don't know if that's the kind of rambling answer, but yeah, sometimes it's upsetting. Most of the time it's great. And you just, just have to, I'm just me. I'm just a, a little human doing stuff. So, but I, I, I always relate to these things in music, right? You know, the Beatles come along and they've been inspired by a bunch of people. I've been inspired, you know, I'm not the Beatles. I'm not saying that, but like, you know, that kind of music becomes popular or you pick some modern kind of thing, right? And then everyone starts sort of doing it. And then maybe that band will go and try something else, right? Or ex experiment, uh, look at Radiohead. You know, they make a bunch of records, big choruses and, you know, big rock songs. And then there's a load of bands inspired by them. And, and then they go, well, all right, let's try something else. And they go and noodle around and electronic music and things. So I've always liked artists that work like that, that try different things. I When I was... Yeah, um, you know, the first sort of music I really liked when I was a kid was like Jimi Hendrix. It's always like tinkering and playing with music. My older brother sort of introduced me to Pink Floyd. Each album is its own sort yep. of big thing, you know, a concept. Uh, David Bowie reinvent himself as a person for every album, you know, for different periods of his music. Dylan, Neil Young. You know, Neil Young got sued by his record label for making an album that wasn't Neil Young enough. I mean, that's amazing like that's I aspire to that kind of thing so yeah that's what that's what interests me like when I'm enjoying art and stuff so I guess that's that's what I kind of want to be like I love that right. you relate everything to music because when I'm drawing and whatever album I have on I'm like what did they mm. think when they made this album and then I try to like make either a collection like this collection is like my album <laughs> or whatever yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, music is the thing. I mean, that's the one of the, you know, it's the, so powerful, emotional force of music. It's incredible. Um, so, yeah, I'm always thinking about like music. Even when I'm like drawing, I'm like, this is a little melody, this little line. Like, that's that thing. And then I'm going to add some color. Boom, boom, boom. Like, I totally feel like it's that way, how I'm like composing something, even though I'm not very musical, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think some of my favorite jobs to do are for artists or musicians, like covers. Oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, it's like such an honor that they want me to describe their music, kind of, basically. Kind of a lot of pressure, though, but I, I really enjoy that task, trying to, like, interpret their music and come up with something that I think relates to it. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think a lot of my, like, I tell people some of my paint, like my paintings are each little songs, you know, so, you know, or they're a painting, like there would be a song that they're right. about and things. Yeah, I think, I just think it's, it's, it's the most innate thing, isn't it? The rhythm, the sound, like it's, it's something we're all immediately connected to <clears throat> before we're even born, you know? So, um, <clears throat> music's music's the thing music and rhythm in in visual art of course you know the way your eye moves around a page yeah. and the interplay of things so there's a lot of overlap i think but yeah when i think of as myself as you know like work and art and themes and um styles it always is easier for me to kind of relate it in a, in a musical sense to try and get my, my head around it you know right what do you like to listen to when you're making stuff? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, I've got my Spotify open. Oh, I, nice. Just lots of lots of lots of different things. Actually, I have I have some playlists. I have, actually, I make a public playlist every year of stuff that that's in my like I'm listening to in my studio. So if you if you are curious, look me up on Spotify and there's a 2020 studio playlist, and you can just hit random or whatever on that and get a little sound but it, it uh like a lot of electronic music and ambient stuff and i would say i like to listen to anything colorful mm, right that makes so, sense i'm not surprised yeah. about that feels colorful to me but yeah anything right. weird like funny noises strange sounds like i don't know just a lot, yeah a lot of different different stuff uh, it's the kind of music i play and then people tell me like to turn it off so it might not be for it might not be it's for everyone music. or people are like what's the strange club music coming out <laughs> so yeah but That's anything right. any but like it's because it yeah it makes it strikes a chord in me right no pun intended <laughs> or maybe a little little pun i guess this is kind of kind of off topic but mm. you're looking through like your website and we saw the like, crazy people and brands and companies you've worked with mm -hmm. Nike. We actually, I think both of us found you through Apple actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have like a favorite? Cause all of those seem like such crazy opportunities. There must be one that stands out. Uh, well, I would say the first one you mentioned was not a favorite, <laughs> but the Apple one was pretty cool. Cause um, I, um, you know, I made an animation for their giant like video wall. It was great for Apple, or whatever. But the fact that they just said do whatever you want on this big wall, that was the best thing. And like their video walls are gorgeous, like in their in the flagship stores. It's the most beautiful screen. This is the screen you should have uh, for your studio. Get rid of your. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, you want to lick it. It's amazing. <laughs> You just <laughs> want to die, die. I've never, you know, it's just beautiful. The the cars on it are just fantastic. Um, so it was, uh, I like any commercial job that gives me the opportunity to have that kind of experience. Like what, you're going to let me design a, a level for a video game? What are you going to, you're going to let me make a toy? That's, in, you know, like I want to make these things anyway. And if I have to do it under the umbrella of a brand or something, and they kind of pay me for that, pleasure of doing that work then okay i'll i'll give it a go you know as long as i'm i'm cool with the brand and everything um those are the best kind of jobs um the worst are, uh, you know can can you just do something and we'll put our logo on it or whatever like that just feels like it was not very exciting i could just do that myself without your logo mm -hmm. um so i don't know if i have favorites i've struggled to like once i do them it's kind of i can't i kind of forget but uh like making making the video game one, I guess, was really cool. Um, the Apple one is cool. Mm, yeah, the toys. I made a collection of toys for Kid Robot like 10 years ago now. That's super cool. Like, all right, we want to make some toys with you. Go and give us like 15 characters or something. Amazing. Oh, that's not going to stand up. That's not going to stand up. <laughs> that's going <laughs> to... So, but yeah. And then you you know learn a bunch of new skills and things. So, uh, 
yeah any, anything like that like for me that's the that's the hook for commercial work if like, oh you're going to lean on the expertise of this brand to make something you've not made before you or would be expensive to make yourself or something so that's what yeah. that's what i'm in it for more you know more than just like these brands are good because like you guys would be like oh he's worked with this brand so and this brand so he must be worth something you know he must be uh this sort of gives me a, a sort of ped- pedigree or whatever but um i always um like whenever i've decided to do that it always ended badly if, right. if that's the reason you're taking the job it doesn't work out for me because right. you end up going oh that's a very shallow um victory and when things go wrong or difficult you start cursing yourself you're like why did i choose this stupid job and there's been jobs where i'm like you know what guys i'll give you the money back and a little something for your time if you just leave me alone because i don't want to do this anymore so yeah you pick 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 the things that excite you creatively that's that's what i try and do anyway um you mentioned you did a commission for charles webster like right out of college oh yeah 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 um you said you were you're so excited you thought like you're gonna be able to quit your job and like this is gonna be it i definitely (laughs) relate to that like you think this job's gonna be huge and then nothing happens yeah yeah did that happen like a lot like during your come up (laughs) every job i got i was like this is it like (laughs) That's how I feel. I, I had a, I had an office job, and it's like I'm gonna walk in on Monday and tell them all to, you know, uh, or I, I just thought, oh, when this album comes out, I better be sat by the telephone. I don't even think I had a, a cell phone at that time. I was like, I better be by the phone because that thing is gonna just ring, 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 you know. <laughs> um, and like the thing is, stuff is happening right but it's like a little seed that's growing under the surface and it doesn't look like anything is happening and but things are but it just might take a little bit of time and like yeah for some people they they do something and it, it takes off straight away but um it, it was slow for me i mean that charles job was amazing like it, i mean just because i really love his music it was doing an album cover straight out of university. It's great. I love music. I want to do album covers. Um, it was a totally cool album. It got well reviewed. It was in like magazines. So they used a picture of my little cover. That cover went on to inspire another musician many, many years later that I didn't know about. And I really loved that album by Burial, right? And um, and then someone, to- uh, Charles told me that his album cover is a reference to the cover I made for Charles. So that blew my mind. Um, and, you know, like ha- some house music labels hit me up and I started doing like sleeve designs for those guys. So it did, like stuff did happen, but I thought, oh, right, I'm going to be a millionaire now. Like I can retire basically off doing an album cover. I had no idea. Like I didn't even know really you could get paid to do that kind of stuff. I'd studied fine art. Obviously I knew you, you, you there are designers and people get paid to make drawings and stuff, but I never studied for that. I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't really know what was going on. I got paid almost nothing to do that cover. But I just thought, wow, it's out in the world. Therefore, everyone's going to come and see it and like just be amazed by it and I'll get loads of work. But then I uh, realized um, there's lots of things that go out to the world every fraction of a second. So, yeah. <laughs> so even more so now than before. So, you know, it's, it's difficult to strike out, which is why you guys are doing so amazingly. Like you should be really, really proud because it's, it's difficult to, difficult to strike a chord it's difficult to to get your work out there and by hook or by crook you know to do it is a huge achievement so and to do it on your own terms being yourselves is even even better right so it's an amazing start but yeah i don't know i i thought that for a bunch of times and then actually i used it to my advantage in the opposite way i got asked to do some album covers and the the designers didn't want me to do it really in my style and I was very against that because I thought, oh, 
I don't want to be record, I don't want to be known as the guy that paints like I don't know what they were even now, like stripes. Like, can you? You're a painter. Can you paint us some stripes for this album cover? I'm, it's not really my thing. I don't really want to do it. And they've said, look, it's a paid job. It's nothing bad, and no one's going to know. Like, it's going to come out, and you'll do the. Thing. And they were right. So I, I did a bunch of album covers that you would never know were by me just to earn money, you know, and there's nothing wrong in that. And I thought the opposite. I thought everyone's going to know me as the stripey guy and will ruin my career, but it, 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 it didn't matter at all. So sometimes we, you know, it's the world to us, but to the rest of the world that people are just getting on with their own lives. So. Right. You remember when you made the shift from, working and being a creative to being creative full-time um yeah i mean uh yeah pretty much is some commercial work facilitated it like i got paid a bunch of money for some work that i made and i thought okay if i do this once a year then i can survive therefore i don't need this part-time job so i made that decision so i leave and I always I thought, well, I, if, if, it, if it goes badly, I can just go back. I would just have to get another job. Like, that's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is I'll be back here in six months' time or 12 months' time. So that's what I did. I had no idea what, you know, how, if I was going to survive or what I was going to do. But it, um, it just, I saw a, I saw a route. Like I, to me, it was presented that, Hey John, we, you can earn some money painting some stuff for some, some companies. That's a viable way for me to earn some money. Wow. I didn't know that existed. All right. I'm going to, I'll do that. And then I'm going to live very frugally off that money and see if I can make more stuff and do other stuff. And then, yeah, that's, that's what I did. So I did. I lived in a not too expensive place, you know, city in the UK and I lived off that money and I didn't really spend it and, you know, other than food and rent. And it, it bought me the most valuable thing in the world, which is time. And I spent that time making work because that's all I really wanted to do. And like, it's the best investment, right? The best investment you can have is in yourself and in, in time making things um, invaluable. So that's yeah that's sort of how i made that leap no one asked me to do it no one said john we want you to be f a full-time artist now the artists that are all full-time are, are going to welcome you into the it, you're never going to get that invitation so you just have to sort of take that risk right. go for it i guess yeah yeah i think my biggest goal is just owning my time like if i'm creating somehow on my own time like i'm happy yeah yeah that's that's especially in this like uh lockdown world that we're kind of experiencing it's like yeah. i'm hunkered into this little cocoon and i'm making things and like i'm satisfied in a way i mean i miss all the stuff but i can survive like this because it's i'm still really like all my neurons are firing off and i'm like oh, i've got lots of ideas and things I want to do. And that's great. I'm very grateful that I'm entertained in that way. Like we're, we're yeah, lucky exactly. that we have that, those outlets. And that's why I'm like, people should be more creative. That's why I'm, that's why, wait, this is a good leap for an <laughs> infomercial. Wait. <laughs> I'm excited Should've to see where this better. goes. <laughs> I like the drawings in the back, by the way. Oh, thanks. They're um, they're by people that have visited my studio. That's awesome. Oh, little that tour. Yes. I should, I should give you a little tour of my studio. Yes, let's do a tour. For the, for the video. Oh, so no rules. I apologize. We just want to talk to you like we're hanging know. out. I don't know. Uh, oh, we are just hanging out. Uh, it's yeah. great. Uh, so I was going to go like, that's why I made this book. It's great to create because everyone should be creative and have fun making stuff. But seriously, buy, buy this book. Yeah, everyone um, check out the book. <laughs> but no, but I think it's a, a, a great um, antidote for like depression and anxiety and stuff. It's like making things. And and yeah, so this is my studio. Wow, so. that's so nice. <laughs> is that, there we go. So this is like the painting area. 
and here are some of my my paintings and things and so that that's the that's the door where you would have come in and then this is where i come um most days i come in here and i make stuff and here are some paintings this little paint. these are some new paintings little things this is so uh, cool yeah So yeah, I'm very, very lucky to have a lot of space I can come to. This. But maybe I should throw it all away and just get a headset. It would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is like, this, yeah, this is some uh, sweatshirt spray paint. How this is one of those for? infinite thingies. Oh, wow. oh, we were just talking about those. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I bet you were, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little, little one we made. Um, I've had this studio for a few years now. Three or four years. So here are some knickknacks. That's a little cardboard pizza. Oh, I saw those guys. Yep. Some stickers. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so cool. Banana. <laughs> I made some badges a while ago. That's a, a, a grumpy matzo ball suit. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. It's just messing around. Just trying to have fun. Um, yes, I've been here a little while. There's the window. That's so cool. The light is fading in North Brooklyn. But yeah, I'll, I'll stand up and I'll put it here. Yeah. Um, oh, and these are some lovely pictures, yeah, that people have made when they've, they've visited. So, yeah, they keep me company. I'm back. Yeah. I think having a dedicated studio space like that, like, I really need that. That's like <laughs> my dream that. to have a studio. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it is a dream. It is a dream. And um, it is nice to go somewhere and like go to work. Uh, and yep. I, that's what I loved about being an art student so much was every day I'd walk to the university and I'd be like, I'm off to make art. I'm off to like make something. Yeah. That felt so amazing. I, like every morning, I was like really grateful. Well, not really morning, mm -hmm. more sort of late morning, early afternoon. I would like you know go, go into the studio and be, just be. Like, this is great. I want. How can I make this my life? That was, that was my ambition. I think. Yeah. That's yeah. My so, about art school is like, you wake up and you head there and like you have a purpose. It seems very like professional. You have your own little spot. You clock mm -hmm. in like a job and. I miss it so much. Yeah. I mean, also having other people around you. Yeah. They're also dealing with the ups and downs of, of making art and, and popping in and seeing what you're up to. And, all, oh, that reminds me of this work. Or have you checked out that? It's such a nice environment. I think it's tough. Like art school and those kind of things in general are really expensive and prohibitive for a lot of people. And it's, it seems sort of unfair in a way. But, um, so I'm not saying you, ha you like anyone has to to go to those things, but they are real luxury. They are a real treat. But I'm sure, like in your in your neighbourhood, there must be studios, art studios, places you can you can rent and stuff. You know, it's the space and it's the community. Really important. Yep. For sure. But these things also exist online. Yeah. In VR. <laughs> cool. All right. I think. Um... It's going to be our longest episode yet, I think. Oh, no. How long, how long have we been going? You can chop it. I think hour 15, hour 12, which is not bad. It's not too long. You can. I found that really can, interesting. You can oh, chop. this is so interesting. Oh, this is my it's favorite episode. No chopping. Yeah. Well, that's very sweet of you guys. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I've had a lot of fun chatting to you. Yeah. Honored to have you on. Um, like, this is huge no, for us. Um, no, I'm I'm very flattered. I'm very honored to. I'm inspired. Oh, likewise. But yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna sit down on this. Little... My dream was to have a studio, and then one day have a sofa in a studio. <laughs> That's my dream. It's you take waiting. naps? Uh, no, you know what? I bought I bought one that was too small to lie on. Although I have tried, because I knew if, <laughs> if if it was big enough to nap on, then I would, and then that would yeah. kind of defeat. It would be the most expensive like place to go and nap, so it'd be ridiculous. So right. I would say, like, yeah, having a studio, like, you have to justify the cost of it, I guess, or its existence. So 
sometimes when feeling less motivated it's like well you stop moping around like get back to the studio and, and make it happen because you know it, it, you can't just let let it sit idle or be be t- too too um uninspired for, for long so yeah it, a bit like going to college or having somewhere to go you like right. yeah it's a bit of a pressure to to get there sometimes it's useful yeah it's like a gym membership like why right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> totally um i got one last question for you if you got sure. one i'd love to hear it but you got into crypto art somewhat recently right yeah been- er- earlier this year it's been amazing like um still feel i'm like learning a lot about it and a lot of things i don't know but um it's i mean it's been a kind of accelerated year right yeah like maybe introduced hit up by the the, the nifty gateway people or the end of like this time last year or the beginning of this year i think and i had a meeting with them and i had no idea what they were talking about and um but it's been amazing and i think like i know a lot of normal people or normal ish people and some of them are starting to talk about it. So that to me is a real sign that it like it's because like you guys are super clued in on the cutting edge of the future in, in you know, in the VR worlds and like, you know, but for o- older, smellier people like me, it's, it's we're a bit slower <laughs> on the uptake. So but I'm starting to hit like, I'm starting to hear other people like talk about it. So that to me always is like an interesting sign. It's like, OK, it, it's starting to filter through. But yeah, it's been some amazing stuff, some Your crazy stuff. Awesome. I, the, the, my, oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> thanks. I'm st- still trying to get a handle on on all these things and like the best way to utilize like how it can work. I think that's what's most interesting uh, t- to me as a spectator or as a as someone that l- likes looking at art, um, like seeing the things you can do in that that space that you can't do in other spaces. I think it's really early days. Like there's there's so much to explore, but it's been some really fantastic things. So um, yeah, I'm just yeah thrilled to to be a little nugget in there and to to see what next year will bring. But you guys are just destroying, aren't you? Like Thank you. Godzilla's <laughs> stomping stomping your way through the city. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, seeing people like you join it. Um, that gives us a lot of confidence as well. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you'll see a lot more, like, yep. n- people outside of a, a native digital realm coming in. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, we'll see, see what happens. But um, people have been really nice to me, and, and it's been great, like, meeting you guys and, and some other people on, on that space. And, yeah, I mean, maybe it's... It, fed up because of the year we had as well um but it's been great to like be involved in something like creative and in that space when other avenues have been a little bit um difficult to sort of go um, other uh, i don't know that analogy started to drift off um but yeah anyway it's been super cool I, yeah i've got lots of things i'd like to do next year so yeah awesome all right before zoom craps out yeah. on us again thank you again for having us or being on this was huge. no thank you thank you both very very much I, I love what you're doing i love that you're making this podcast video cast youtube extravaganza i think it's really great um i love the works you've been making and uh yeah have a wonderful wonderful holiday see oh, you in yeah. vl land yeah yeah we'll see yeah, let's yeah. let's meet up in vr land yeah anyway, get a headset get tell us when you get a headset yeah. and we could talk about it yeah. all right and like Please. run around yeah. in the spaces <laughs> all right run around while sat sat down <laughs> yeah all right sounds like my kind of running all right okay awesome <laughs> thank you so much i, I really mean it thanks